G'day everyone, where's Wally here? Wolfie6020 last year gave me his broken P900 to do what I wanted with it, see if it could be repaired. The camera had been dropped and it was totally functional, except it would not take any photos, which is kind of the primary function of it. I grabbed a serving tray and covered it with an old towel. This way, when interrupted, the whole workspace can be covered or moved. I find it's a great idea to put a small parts tray there with to put all the small screws aside in. I put a small piece of paper as a label in each compartment so I know where all the screws should go if I'm unable to finish it for some time. <clears throat> Use some nice strong plus four glasses and a headlight. Very helpful when you're old and blind. You've got to be able to see it to fix it. First up, remove the battery. Then you remove the case screws holding the back. There's two screws on the back side of the camera near the mount hole. You don't need to remove all four, just the two at the back. Then you take one from near the battery flap, but don't pull the one out from inside the battery flap. There's two screws on the left side, two screws on the right side, and one under the USB flap. Then there's two screws in under the LCD. Once you've got all those, there's a little slot between those two screws, and you can pop a little screwdriver or spudger in there and pop the back off. You've got to be a little careful because there's two flat flexible leads, FFC leads, for on the right hand side. On the FFC side of the FFC connectors, there's a little flap. Insert a spudger under it and you flip it up and away from the FFC. Once open, the FFC will slide out easily. You disconnect both and then you can place the back safely to one side. Now to remove the aluminium plate, you disconnect the small FFC at the bottom and gently peel it off the plate. Then you disconnect the three other FFC leads at the top. Pull out the three little screws that hold on the viewfinder and then you remove the two screws on the left and five screws on the right. The plate should be able to lift up now. You should be now able to remove the plate and the GPS and the Wi-Fi module on the left hand side. If you want to do stuff with the CCD, now is a good time. You can pull out the three screws holding the CCD. I found that using a straw and a, as a suck tube is a great way to pick up the IR filter if you want to pull that out. It's almost invisible, so you've got to be careful not to lose it. I prefer to remove the lens without removing the CCD sensor. Before removing the three screws that hold in the lens, you must remove the two FFCs, one to the focus and one to the shutter assemblies. The focus FCC is about three millimeters wide and goes up and under the viewfinder bits and pieces. It'll push in and out, so it's easy enough to get out with a good pair of tweezers. The shutter aperture FFC goes over the left side of the lens at about 9 o'clock. It's not exactly the same type of connectors as the others, so you lift up the flap on the opposite side of the FFC entry to release it. Free the FFC from the pin in the centre of the FFC, so it's free to slide into the lens holder. If both FFCs are loose, you can then stand the camera on its lens cap, if you haven't already done it like that. Then you remove the three silver screws holding the lens, very, very slowly lift the camera and allow the lens to slide down and watch those FFCs so that they don't break. Now hopefully you have the lens body separate from the FF from the camera with no broken leads. Now it's time to disassemble the dismantle the lens. Just do this. Easy as. Thanks. Now that lens is in four parts you can inspect and fix as required. Look down into the barrel I can see where the FFC leads are broken. That was not good to see. 
the aperture and shutter assembly are joined to the vibration reduction lens by one screw and two clips. Inspecting the shutter and aperture showed signs of jamming. One leaf appeared bent and stressed. I dismantled the shutter first, the four leaves popped right out, and the the aperture leaves followed instantly creating quite a puzzle. There is a visible crease in one leaf. It would appear that the shock the camera experienced caused a leaf of the shutter and aperture to become entangled. The shutter could not open, and so all photos were black. The focus lens stepper motor is a sleeve inside the cam sleeve. I will show you a few more pictures of the lens internals. Then I will start putting it all back together. All the other photos of chips and bits and other internals I will add to the end for those that want to see. I was able to purchase replacement focus assembly and a new shutter aperture vibration reduction assembly from AliExpress. To reassemble the lens there are a few points to follow. This is the method to follow to reassemble the lens back together. There are various index marks to look for. Once the lens body is assembled you have to insert it back into the lens holder. The two FFC leads need to be threaded back through the respective holes in the lens holder. I use two cotton threads. I put a small piece of sticky tape on the end of the thread. I stuck that on the back side of the FCC. Draw the cotton out slowly as you insert the body into the holder. Line up the key pin between the lens body and lens holder. Insert all three screws and then reconnect the two FFC leads. I next removed the cover of the zoom gears to check them. Here is a few pictures and a video. A few pictures showing how the camera came to life, but would not take proper photos. I updated the firmware and charged the battery fully. Then it came to life. Here are some of the pictures I got after that.